I told you that this video right here is actually going to help you make more money by getting more bookings. That's right. Welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome to my channel. I'm an online teacher, and I'm also an online coach slash mentor for online teachers. The most successful online teachers know how to effectively build the relationships with their students. And today, I'm going to show you how you can do the same. This video is probably going to be a little bit longer than most of my videos, but I promise that I'm going to give you some awesome content, some tips, some tricks. It's going to be worth it, so make sure you watch until the end. So there are actually studies that have shown that having that relationship that positive beneficial relationship helps your students learn not only is it going to help them learn it's going to help them retain their knowledge but they're going to be more excited to come to class if you can ever think of a teacher that you hated <clears throat> Miss math teacher if you can think of a teacher that you did not like you probably know that it negatively impacted your own personal educational experience I can tell you, like my math teacher, I hate math. And a lot of it is probably contributed to the fact that I had a witch for a math teacher. We had some really negative experiences. Personally, I can tell you the story that when I was in, what, like sixth grade maybe, my best friend Jocelyn and I, we were passing back a notebook. You remember back when you had the notebooks? Like you had those notebooks and you would write the notes back and forth to your friends. It was like after the foldy notes, but like you pass the whole notebook back and forth. My math teacher had decided she was going to teach us a lesson for doing this. And she stood out in the hallway to the janitor and she read the notebook, but she made up her own stories about what was in the notebook. It wasn't actually what was written. And she like, I, that negatively impacted my experience with that teacher because all of a sudden I had rumors going around that were started by my math teacher. And to this day, I hate math. So having a bad relationship with your student, I can tell you from personal experience, definitely can affect the way that you teach and how much they retain. The majority of times, these parents are paying really, really good hard earned money in order to invest in their child's education. So you wanna make sure that you're making it worth it for them. Give these students the best experience that they can have and a big part of that comes in building that relationship with your students now i do want to preface this by saying that doing this kind of job you shouldn't be in it for the money i hope that you're also doing it because you love what you do and you enjoy working with kids because if you don't it's going to show you're going to be doing a huge disservice to your students nobody wants to book with my math teacher <laughs> If you know me personally and you know my math teacher, don't name her name because that's not cool. However, building relationships is going to increase your bookings. Increasing your bookings is going to increase your income. So not only is this going to be beneficial for the students, it's going to be beneficial for your checkbook. So basically this video is going to teach you how to make money by getting better at doing what you hopefully already love doing. The first step to building your relationships and guys this is so simple you guys probably already do it in all of your classes and if you don't it's so this is so so easy to do it say hello and goodbye to your students by saying hello it's not just hey we're gonna jump into the lesson content it's you know i appreciate you how are you by saying goodbye it's not peace out lessons over i can't wait to get out of here so when i teach a small group class or a one-on-one -on -one class i will greet every student individually say hello ask them how they're doing uh, depending on what time of day it is for them ask them what they plan on doing today what they did yesterday what they did today if it's their very first class with me i will ask them what their name is how old they are where they're from how they're doing today and judging by their skill level i might throw in another question like what's your favorite color what's your favorite animal it's just a really easy way to throw in some relationship building right from the beginning of class if it is a larger class i'm not going to spend as much time per student but i do still make sure that i greet every student individually and by name so hello mark hi john hi elsa every single student needs to be greeted individually and by name when the class is over, I don't just peace out and turn off the camera. I also take my time to say goodbye to every student. So in my out school classes, I will say goodbye to every student and they each get a high five. If 
my dog or my cat happens to be next to me, I'll pick up my dog and my cat and I'll have my dog give them high fives. They love that. If it's a one-on-one -on -one class, I take my time to say goodbye. Now when I'm saying take my time, I'm not taking five minutes to do this. It's just like a minute, you know, but I say goodbye, tell them good night or have a good day in school or have fun doing whatever, depending on what I already know about the student. And I always tell them that they really did a good job and I can't wait to see them again. If it is a one-on-one -on -one class or a small group, I will also take time to say goodbye to other things in their environment. So if they've got a stuffed animal that they were playing with during class, I'll say goodbye to their stuffed animal. If I know the stuffed animal's name, I will say goodbye to the stuffed animal by name. If they've got their mom sitting with them, helping them, if they've got, you know, grandmas in the background or their brother or their sister, I will also say goodbye to whoever else is there involved in the class. Even if I hear like their dog barking in the background, I'll be like, goodbye dog. I know it sounds silly, but I promise you, doing that kind of stuff goes a long way. Number two, learn and use their names. And I'm not just talking about when you say hello and goodbye, I mean during class too. If you're teaching the lesson about foods that people like, one of the questions might be, what do you like? Instead of just saying that, you can just as easily say, Ellie, what do you like? There is really something powerful with putting a name to the lesson content. If you're a pale fish teacher, you're going to see their names next to their profile pictures. And a lot of times their names are written in Chinese, so you don't know what to call them. One tip that I wanna give you if you're a pale fish teacher is when you see this, it's in Chinese, you can actually go into your settings of that student and you can change their name. It's only going to change it on your end. It's not going to change it on their end. They won't see that change. But by changing their name, you can remember their English name or you can write it out phonetically so you know how to say their Chinese name. And it helps you to remember your students and their names, especially if you have a lot of students. On Palefish, I have taught over 600 students. And I'll be honest, I don't remember each of their names. Say I taught a child a year ago and then that student decides, hey, I'm gonna buy a package, I'm gonna sign up for a class with this teacher. Now, while I have taught thousands of classes since the last time I taught this student, they only have one English teacher, so they might remember me. So if I have his name written down, if I changed his name in there and I have his name written down, he comes into class and I address him and I say, hi, Tommy. He's going to feel really, really special because I remembered his name. I didn't really remember his name, but he's going to feel really special that I did. I already know what you're thinking because I've been asked this probably a thousand times, at least. What if they don't have an English name? This is super controversial in teacher discussion forums, but I promise you, it's really not that big of a deal. If they give you a Chinese name, you can use it. They don't have to have an English name. You can ask them if they have an English name. If they don't, try to pronounce their Chinese name. And I know because my Chinese pronunciation is atrocious. If you can't get it, you can always ask them if you can call them something else. You look like a queen. Can I call you Elsa? The majority of students are gonna be totally okay being called Elsa, unless they're like a 10 year old boy. Then they won't. I have a student that I've had for a while I cannot pronounce her name for the life of me. I have tried and tried and tried and butchered it every single time. I've had it written out in Pinyin. I have had the mom sit down with me and try. I've had her send me voice messages. It sounds right to me, but it's not because she tells me it's not. Lulu sounded to me like a shortened version and I asked if I could call her Lulu and it stuck so Lulu is her name. You can also ask them if they want an English name. Not every kid does, but some do. Some are going to say yes, some are going to say no. It's totally up to them. Worst case scenario, number three, laugh at yourself. If you can't get their name, you can always laugh at yourself. And laughing at yourself works in so many different cases. Don't expect to be perfect. If you're sitting there for like five hours straight teaching classes, you're probably going to have a few slips of the tongue every once in a while and say something that was not right. You are a teacher, but that doesn't mean you're expected to be perfect. You can make mistakes. If you make a mistake, just laugh at yourself. Let the student correct you. 
you can also use this to work to your advantage. If you're having a hard time getting a student to participate, they don't wanna talk, not happening, they're not responding to you. You can play a game that we call Stupid Teacher. <gasps> I know! It's a dog! Circle the cat. Playing Stupid Teacher usually gets the student to respond. They'll laugh, they'll tell you the answer. Now you've got a talking student and you didn't before. Number four, find ways to connect. This is the easiest thing to do once you have some practice. Connect whatever you're learning about to their personal life or your personal life and let them ask questions. You can also talk to them about unrelated things. Don't go too long with it because you still need to do the lesson content, but it's okay. Okay, so for example, your student has a toy that is super distracting. All they wanna do is play with that toy. Ask to see the toy. And then ask questions about the toy. Show your interest in what they're interested in. Then tell them what you like about it. Now you've done two things by doing this. First of all, you found a common interest and you made a connection with that student. You guys both think that toy is super cool. But even better, number two, they're actually gonna put that toy away nine times out of 10. I don't think I've ever had it, so it's probably higher than that. I, th I don't think I've ever had it where they won't put the toy away. But they're gonna put that toy away because you've spent a little attention on it, you've given it some attention, it's had its time in the spotlight. I know it sounds crazy, but it works. All right, number five. Get to know your students. My one student, she plays hockey, she's got five sisters, she's got two brothers, they have different dads so they don't all live together. She loves music, but she hates the palefish music. She loves Youth With You, which is like a Chinese girl band version of American Idol. And her favorite song is Lion by All Ace. Another student, he loves video games. He's actually one of the top 10 players on the scoreboard for a particular game, which I think is super impressive. He hates English. I have another student who is an amazing piano player. I mean, like, amazing. He learns all of the Palefish songs. He will learn them and play them during our music classes. He has five cats. Um, most of them live outdoors, but he does have an indoor cat whose name is Little Black. I can do this with the majority of my students. Over time, we've learned a lot about each other and we've learned to build that relationship. Learning this stuff really goes a long way in relationship building because it shows that you care about them when you take the time to learn that about them. All right, number six. This is six in Chinese, by the way. Appeal to their interests. Now that you've known them, you've gotten to know them, you know what they like, you know what they dislike, you can use this knowledge to benefit the class experience. So I have an out school student who hates being on camera and he will always bring his stuffed animal in and I'll talk to the stuffed animal instead. I will use the stuffed animal's name. I will ask questions about the child that brought the stuffed animal, but I direct them to the stuffed animal and he participates better by doing that. One of my palefish students is very, very young and she learns better when I put a blanket over my head. You don't believe me? Because I've got a five-star review to prove it. I have students that love or hate animals, students who need more play, students who like to put me in jail. This is my mom. <laughs> she is a police officer. <laughs> she is a police officer. She arrested my teacher. <laughs> my teacher. I have a very bad teacher. Yeah. I have a very <laughs> bad teacher. teacher. <laughs> <laughs> my teacher is in jail. <laughs> my teacher, teacher is, is in jail. jail. Yeah. Students who love when I refer to them as fairy princesses. And I have a student that wants to pretend to eat everything. No matter what the vocabulary we're learning, he wants to eat it. This is a chair. I eat chairs. I'll just feed him things in class. In one of my next videos, I'm going to be going over what Chinese students like. So if you are an ESL teacher and you have a lot of Chinese students, I am going to go over a lot of the things that a lot of students in China like. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Number seven, let them know you. Let them in. Obviously, keep it appropriate. You're still working with students, but you can let them in and let them know about you when it's appropriate. 
So most of my students know that I've got chickens and ducks. They know that I've got a dog. Most of them know my dog's name and they will call him. They know about my cat that I just got. My aunt just passed away and somebody needed to take in her cat. So they know that I have my aunt's cat. I didn't tell them that my aunt passed away, but I told them that I'm taking care of my aunt's cat. And they will call her, they will say, Amber, because that's the cat's name. Now she's gonna jump up on my lap. I know you guys have seen her too. She likes to come in. Most of, most of the time I'm recording a video, she's here, and I'm really surprised she's not. Now I called her and she's gonna be here. If we're talking about families, I will tell them that I have six brothers and a sister, and I will laugh at that, and I'll say, oh my goodness, Six brothers, that's too many. Do you want one of my brothers? Because I'll put them on an airplane and send them to you. And then they laugh. When we're talking about weather, I've told them about Snowvember. Those of you in Western New York probably remember that. <laughs> I've told them related stories about my family and pets. When I was raising chickens and I had little baby chickens, a lot of my students met my chickens. Doesn't have to be your whole personal life. They don't have to know about your whole personal life. But just telling them little bits here and there can help extend the lesson. It can help them get to know you, build that connection, relate it to their own personal life. Number eight, be respectful. So this goes without saying or it should go without saying anyways. I really hope that you're respectful to all of your students. I do want to add one thing though, if you are teaching students in China. Don't talk about eating dogs and cats. Don't ask them about it. Don't ask them if they do. Don't joke about it. This is extremely offensive and racist. I'm gonna be honest, the majority of people in China do not eat that. Kind of like in America, we eat squirrels, right? But how many of you have ever eaten a squirrel? That's something that only a small portion of people in America do. It's only something that a small portion of people in China do. I have had students bring that up because they think it's disgusting. They say, oh, some people in China. And I said, I totally changed the subject. Don't bring that up at all. If it gets brought up, change the subject as fast as you can. It's, it's extremely offensive. It's racist, you're gonna piss off the parents, you're probably never gonna get a booking again from them. If you're in Palefish, you're probably going to be on a don't send this teacher more bookings list from whatever head teacher they have. You're probably gonna get a complaint. It is super disrespectful and it is racist. Number nine, wait. Wait stands for why am I talking? If you're teaching class and you realize like, hold on a second, I'm doing a lot of the talking here, wait. Why am I talking? Ask them a question, pause, let the student do the talking. And number 10, what do you think comes after let them talk? Listen, when they talk, you listen. Like, actually listen. Hey guys, it's Editing Jillian here. I started editing this and I'm like, you know what, for the Palefish teachers, I should probably tell you. So in the Palefish lessons, they each have these greetings, which are perfect because it gives you the chance to offer your student a choice. And I would highly recommend to offer your student a choice. Ask them, do you want to be the police officer? Do you want to be the doctor? Do you want to be the doll? Do you want to be the teddy bear? Doing this is going to help build and strengthen that relationship just by giving them the extra choice. So give your students choices. All right, back to your regularly scheduled program. I know that this probably sounds like a lot and you're probably wondering how you can even fit this in to your classes. And you're probably wondering how you can even fit this into a 25 minute class. Really easy, don't overthink it. You can slide relationship building questions in to different lessons, different parts of different lessons as basic extension. You can do it um, in the intro and the outro to class. And every lesson you can learn a little bit more about them and build a stronger connection. The more you do it, the more natural it becomes. You don't have to spend a lot of time on it and you can naturally just slide it into the existing lesson content. One tip that I do want to tell you is don't want to get carried away. Some of your students are going to want to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. They're going to want to get way off topic if you've got a talker and you don't want to talk about anything off topic for too long and you don't want to stay on any slide or any on any one section of the lesson content for too long. So be prepared to redirect your student to the lesson content 
if that does happen. And you can just simply do that by waiting for a natural pause in their sentence and say, wow, that's really cool, as you're changing the slide and then say, hey, what is, whatever, carry on with your lesson the way that, the way that it was planned. This is especially important for out school classes or any class where you have multiple students that you're teaching in one setting. So don't let it negatively impact. You need to learn how to redirect as well. All right. If anyone has any stories about relationship building with your students, anything cool that you've learned about your students or how you built a relationship with one of your students, drop it in the comments below. I'd love to hear these stories. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope that this video was helpful for you and I hope that it helps you build a stronger relationship with your students because it's going to be so beneficial. They're going to benefit from it and you're going to get more students from it. You will get student referrals from head teachers. Your students will refer their friends to your class. You may have heard me talking about this before, but I have a class where I had one student come in, the next class she brought a friend, the next class she brought another friend, the next class she brought another friend. Now I teach these four kids weekly in two different classes. So building that relationship with that one student got me eight bookings a week. All right guys, I am out. If this video was helpful to you, make sure you hit the like button and click subscribe so you don't miss my next videos. All right, bye guys.